Welcome to the workshop. Today we are doing this Tandorio, among the most affordable solid bronze watches on AliExpress. I got this in one of those sort of random interim sales, and the sales price was about 110 US dollars, and with coupons that came down to just over 90 US dollars. So it's a great opportunity to try this somewhat esoteric material without completely losing your shirt if you decide it's not for you. Now for the modding minded, it's a great opportunity to try that forced shipwreck patina. And it's also a good mod base with the NH35 movement. But do be aware that this is a 33 millimeter dial, so you're going to have a few less options there. I opted to leave all of the uh, discoloration and fingerprints that came from the factory. You're not going to get immaculate bronze, especially at this price. So don't be surprised if you receive something similar. Now towards the end, I'll touch it up with uh, my favorite bronze paste over here. And uh, you can see how shiny we can get this. Specification wise, we do have a sapphire crystal. And we can cross reference with this Addy's Dive mod. And we'll come back to this in a minute because it's an excellent comparison. These are very similar watches. They both have an NH35 and they actually both have 33 millimeter dials. So this, this one is actually 31 millimeters and you can see it's a bit small. So you would have the same issue putting that size dial on this. The crown is in matching bronze, though it is unsigned. There is also a ghost position. I would have preferred an NH38, but with minimum order quantities and how many variations of this watch there are, it just wasn't in the cards. The crown is threaded and the action feels very smooth, very nice. And the, uh, the back is also a screw down. So that supports that 200 meters of claimed water resistance. Funny enough, it does say all stainless steel. And that's because this was originally and still is offered as a steel version. And they're clearly just reusing the same parts. The case back being steel is a good thing because a bronze one would actually react pretty quickly with your skin and uh, leave a nice green mark. It's also not the strongest for threads. And in the same vein, you'll see that the crown stem and the crown tube are good old hardened steel. Let's check some dimensions. The diameter is 39 millimeters. The lug to lug is just about 48 millimeters. And the thickness is pretty standard at 12 millimeters. These are also 20 millimeter lugs, so they're going to fit, you know, your standard straps that you got in the drawer. Bronze has more mass than steel, but in practice, it's very similar. So if we look at the Addies, 60.4 grams. And if we swap to the Tandorio, 63.7 grams. So basically just a three gram difference. Now, what I'm not a big fan of is the proportions of the lugs. And as opposed to the Addies Dive, which is much more of a, a true pilot's watch case, these are quite a bit chunkier. And I can measure it for you but it's three millimeters at least. Whereas the Addy's dive, it's basically 2.5. So it might seem like a minor difference, but that disparity is gonna make them sit differently on the wrist. So for better or worse, the Tandorio is gonna be a bit more prominent. Basically, they cut corners by forcing this case into two rolls. Instead of a more felt pilot, we've got the utilitarian lugs of a field watch. So ultimately, there is going to be a downside to a huge variety of choice if it means that the designs get a bit homogenized. Speaking of variations, this style is my pick of the bunch. The cathedral hands and the neo-gothic numerals, now they might not be totally unique, but it is certainly a less common style. They harken back to interwar pilots' watches, but also a little bit further back to First World War trench watches. So I guess that somewhat justifies the mixed case style if we're making excuses. I also like the sort of steampunk vibe that we get created in unison with the bronze case. I'm not going to bother with the loom. We know it's not great, and adding this Fotina color just seems to make things worse. You can also see that the hands and the numerals don't match. Now that Fotina of any kind and the, uh, the non-matching colors, that would really bug me on a steel watch. But in fact, with this, with the bronze case, there's just enough of a spectrum of warm, tone, warm tones, including the, uh, the red numbers on the, on the minute track there, that it blends the color just enough. 
Something that also doesn't really come across in the photos is the subtle sunburst pattern that we get to this dial. So you get a bit of visual interest up close and this really nice charcoal color. Now, credit where credit's due. If you ask me, Tandorio is doing some interesting stuff. They do some offbeat watches like these bronze watches. They do an SKX uh, 013 homage. And they are also one of the few brands to actually have a logo, which I think is pretty well executed up here. I also think it's kind of fun to say Tandorio, right? That's much better than Parnas, which looks kind of like penis, or Courgette, Courgette, which, you know, really sounds like a French zucchini. Simichrome. You might be familiar with Brasso. This is a similar compound. It's made in Germany, so you know it's good. Not really Polish at all, is it? But what it is, it's much less abrasive. You can see it's kind of like a lotion or an oil. And clock restorers really like this stuff for cleaning old plates. You'll want gloves and good ventilation, but the advantage over, say, an emery board like this or Brasso is that you're much less likely to mar the finish of your watch. I like to start with a small dab on a Q-tip and just starting from an edge, paint a couple dots on, and then just work our way in. And that's with a small circular movement. Best practice would be to keep the circles as small as possible, but that has to be a pattern and a speed that you can keep up for the whole piece of work. I'll stop there because you're going to see this watch again with a full polish in another comparison video. Much more to be done even on this lug alone, but really look at the contrast that we have with just a little bit of labor. And particularly when you look on the same surface compared to what it was before. And now that it's clean, you can see that it is brushed and to a very fine and straight degree at that. This will eventually fade to the same dull bronze tone as everything else. But that's kind of the appeal of bronze watches. Really, you, you develop a patina over time, and when it gets to be too much, you reset. The metal stays the same underneath. Up close, we also, we haven't altered the finish at all. The lines are still the true true. Just be sure that you keep grit off of your Q-tips, and uh, also remember to wipe down your watch with uh, a little rag soaked in lighter fluid or soap beforehand. Finishing up with the strap, this weight is a nice touch if you're into that kind of thing. It is genuinely nice to the touch too. It feels good on the wrist and the leather has a nice feel to it. Note it is a lighter brushing on the suede and it did come with this discoloration here. The additional stitching in these shoulders are characteristic of a pilot's watch. Essentially the strap is straight, you get the shoulders and then it's straight down to the 18 millimeter buckle. It is kind of a bummer that we didn't get a bronze buckle to match the case, but surprisingly, I really rate this buckle. It's got a nice brush texture on top and polished on the sides, and then these relieved sort of low profile corners. So, you know, if you're going to play around with different straps, this would be a great strap for a different watch. And, you know, there's a lot of fun to be had with uh, different colors in the bronze. Thanks for sticking around. How did you like this slightly more hands-on format? I'm working on a mod for next week, hope to continue, newly released cases and everything. You know, it's a bit of a challenge, my friends, what with the moving parts, with the talking, the modding, and the filming, Goliathan. But I'm, uh, I'm thankful for y'all, and I want to keep improving. Thanks again, and see you soon.